Good morning, my name is Umberto Mucci. This is We the Italian News, a podcast about Italy during coronavirus times. Today is Thursday, July 14, 2022. Dear friends, these days making this podcast is not easy at all. Numbers say that COVID infections in Italy are 100 times a year ago. It is true that the variant circulating today is much more contagious, but much less lethal. However, we are back steadily above 100 deaths per day from COVID in Italy, whereas the past two summers there had been a lull while today the increase in COVID patients in hospitals also continues. The Italian government has prepared a new vaccine plan that calls for 100,000 doses per day with one hub per 50,000 inhabitants and the return of drive throughs to extend the four dose requirement to the Italian over 60s, about 12 million people. A new vaccine measured on the new variants should arrive in the fall and probably the four dose will be suggested to all Italians. The Italian economy is giving opposite signals but there is great concern. It is true that we had a robust second quarter of the year that has pushed acquired GDP growth for this year so far to 3%. However, the new report from the National Statistics Agency describes a country in great difficulty with some truly alarming and depressing data. Today's Italy is, is an increasingly old country with 14 million people over the age of 65. The population has dropped below 59 million People are having children later and later. The average age at the birth of the first child is 31.4 years old. And Italians are getting married less and less while separations are growing. One person households are 33.2% on a national basis, although in the north it is higher while in the south it is lower. This national percentage for the first time in 2021 has overtaken that of couples with children who now are at 31.2% of households. It is a trend that seems unstoppable and that in 2045, if no change is made, will lead us to another historic overtaking, that of childless couples over those with children. People living in absolute poverty are three times more today than in 2005. They have increased from 1.9 million 17 years ago to 5.6 million in 2021. 9.4% of the Italian population. The situation is even worse for young people between the ages of 18 and 34, a demographic group in which the incidence of poverty has even almost quadrupled from 3.1% in 2005 to 11.1% a year ago. Wages are falling instead of rising and there are 650,000 fewer Italians than in 2020 as a result of more deaths, a dramatic drop in births and also less emigration from abroad. Important news from an economic perspective is that for the first time in 20 years, a dollar is worth a euro, one on one. This means that it will cost Americans less to buy made in Italy products and visit Italy. So be sure to buy Italian and come visit Italy. Another problem at this time and especially next fall is and will be gas supply. Russia on Monday cut its gas supplies to Italy by a third, officially for maintenance and just for 10 days, but all of us are sure that it will be permanent and it will get even worse, and not for technical reasons, but for political and military reasons. The Italian government has been working hard to end the nation's reliance on Russian gas since Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, reaching and preparing a series of agreements to boost supplies from elsewhere like Algeria, Angola, Congo, Libya, Egypt, Israel, Mozambique and Qatar, and increasing the national production. The proportion of Italy's gas supplied by Moscow has already fallen from 40% at the start of the conflict to around 25% now. In addition, the government is preparing a contingency plan that, if the Russian gas stoppage continues, may include a new austerity austerity in the fall with interventions on heating and lighting in public places and a curfew for stores at 7 p.m. and clubs at 11 p.m. In Italy, in part, austerity has already started with some measures already in place to save electricity. And another crisis right now in Italy is that due to drought. Piedmont, Lombardy, Veneto, Friuli, Venezia Giulia and Emilia Romagna have already been given permission by the government to officially declare a state of emergency and these regions may soon be joined by Lazio, Umbria, Liguria and Tuscany. 
The consequences of this problem are serious and affect the production of agri-food goods of many kinds. In these two, Italy is paying a big price for the lack of maintenance of its water networks, little investment in innovation and little vision on the part of those who have made decisions so far. In the world, the drought is fought with desalination, the procedure of processing seawater to make it usable for agricultural and industrial purposes. The leading company in this field is Italian, with plants in the Middle East, the United States and many other parts of the world. But in Italy, which is a peninsula and therefore surrounded on three sides by seawater, laws make it difficult to build desalination plants because of bureaucracy. It's always the same old story. We go all around the world to create innovation, solve problems and generate profit, but in Italy it seems impossible to do so, and the consequences are terrible. Now, usually I leave the good news to the end, but this time instead, I'm sorry, unfortunately, at the end of this video, at this podcast, I briefly tried to tell you about yet another political tragedy in this wonderful, wonderful, but also very complicated country that is Italy. As if all the enormous problems given by the economic crisis, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine, the crucial annual budget law to be written in the fall, the climate and the weather gone crazy, inflation, the danger of having less gas and electricity in the fall, the possibility that the financial markets will tire of a country with a gigantic public debt, the many fundamental reforms promised to get European recovery plan money, and an exhausted population were not enough as if all of this was not, was not enough, and despite the fact that the whole world appreciates and praises Mario Draghi, the current Italian Prime Minister, as never before with other Prime Ministers, it is almost certain, it's incredible, but it is almost certain that the Italian government will be forced to resign today. A disaster for Italy and a gift to Vladimir Putin, not an involuntary one. One of the parties supporting Draghi's government, the one that took the most votes in the last election in 2018, has decided that today they will boycott the key vote of confidence because they don't, do not want to continue supporting him. With one of those Byzantine and convoluted decisions typical of Italian politics, which today, frankly, is more incomprehensible than ever, given the emergency we are experiencing. I will not go into details that would be tedious, painful and difficult to explain and I want to stay neutral. But at the time I record this podcast now, the situation is that it is very likely that this evening the head of the government, Mario Draghi, will be forced to resign. And at this point there are four possibilities, much probably. The first one is for the President of the Republic, Mattarella, to appoint someone else to lead a temporary government and call new elections for September or October. The second one is that there will be a tentative to make a government, not with Draghi, in charge of uh, writing the budget law, the most important one because it is the one that decides how to use public money, and then call elections for February 2023. The third is for Draghi to be reinstated to seek a new confidence vote because the party we mentioned earlier is so incoherent and inconsistent that it might even change its mind and vote to drag its confidence again in a few days as if nothing had happened. It can, it can actually happen this. The fourth is a new draggy government without that party, but everyone so far denies that possibility. I know it sounds like uh, an apocalyptic and incomprehensible science fiction movie, I know that. But instead, it is the reality of Italian politics, which by now has touched sincerely unacceptable limit of madness in such a dramatic situation as today. And in all this, let me be very clear, make no mistake, the fault lies with the politicians, but also with those who voted for them, because they didn't fall from the sky, not at all. I'm sorry to end the podcast with this horrendous news. It costs and weighs more on me than on you, believe me. But if one has to describe what is happening in Italy, this is not news that can be kept silent. Even if at this very moment, I still do not know how it will end. Probably not good. I'm sorry for this. This is all for now. Uh, it's all for today. This was with Italian News a podcast about Italy during these very, very difficult times. My name is Umberto Mucci. I'll see you next Thursday. Please stay safe. Please take care. Ciao from Rome.